Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Fox. Welcome to my channel. What a week, what a week, what a week. My eight artificial intelligence stocks, I have made $440,000 in 10 weeks. The superstars amongst these is Super Microcomputer, good old SMCI, and of course, NVIDIA, NVDA, the engine of artificial intelligence. Last Thursday, I made 120000 on the eight artificial intelligence stocks that I follow. Super microcomputer was 40,000 of that. Super microcomputer is very volatile. It goes up a lot and it can come down a bunch too. So you got to have your stop losses in place. I generally set my stop loss. It's a trailing stop loss of about 4%, which seems to work out well for me because I am on the stock constantly. I'm monitoring them very closely as I am a very active trader. NVIDIA. NVIDIA. VDA. What a spectacular stock. In its earnings, it reported a 78.5% margin. 78.5% is pure profit. When they sell a $40,000 chip, about 31000 of that is pure profit. Their earnings led to their market capitalization going up 277 billion, and their market capitalization right after earnings was over two trillion dollars. And it's the fourth largest company according to market capitalization. That 277 billion market capitalization increase in one day set an all-time record for an individual stock. Their forward guidance lifted all hopes as they continued that the tremendous growth will continue as companies like Microsoft and Meta can't get enough of it. The company is literally printing money at this point and it's real money, not fake money like the Federal Reserve was doing during the health crisis. Jensen Huang, the CEO of Nvidia, is now on the cusp of becoming one of the 20 richest people in the world. He now is worth about 70 billion dollars. With these type of gains, you might think I'm a wild in the streets investor, but I'm not. I'm actually consider myself to be fairly conservative. <laughs> or the most I would say is I'm moderately aggressive. I probably am an aggressive investor, but the way I do it is the money I'm conservative with, I'm very conservative with. And the money that I use in the stock market, I go for it with the major trend. And the major trend right now is the artificial intelligence. I have a monetary worth of about $4.6 million. 600000 of that is probably real estate. $2 million of that is stocks. A good healthy portion, which approaches $2 million at times, is in interest-bearing money markets. And at any one time, I usually have about a million in stocks. I, I have $2 million ready to trade on stocks, but I only usually have about half of it in the stock market. I want to be able to react and to buy aggressively and quickly when I need to. And that amount that's actually in stock will vary from zero to 1.3 million on average. But there's times I might do the full 2 million. There's times when I might be zero. It depends on the day's movement. I'm a very active trader. I like to trade about a million of it and I like to keep a million in reserve to be able to react, to take advantage of the price movements. Looking at the chart on NVIDIA, we have spectacular results for the last year. NVIDIA shows a nice steady upward climb and it's recently experiencing what I call a breakout. And when you're in a breakout, you want to grab that tiger by the tail and hold on. It's at the top of its bullish demands as it should be in a breakout. And also its relative strength is 75, which I consider positive. The higher the relative strength, the better better in a breakout. NVIDIA's price to earnings is 38, which is a little bit high, but in a breakout, what's more important is the earnings growth rate, which is 49%, which is reminiscent of the type of earnings that Tesla used to throw off 
when it was going wildly up. An SMCI super microcomputer, what an exciting stock. It will go down to the 600s and it'll go up above a thousand. And my trailing stop loss of 4% has been working out pretty well. But remember that I am a very active trader. Looking at the chart, you can see that it's gone up in the last year nicely, but it's had some wild swings lately. I think it's settling out to be in the 800s. I continue to invest and reinvest in it. My trailing stop loss of 4% catches the downswing. I wait for it to go down and then I reinvest in it. As they say, traders have this saying that the trend is your friend until the end when it starts the bend. <laughs> okay, and I follow that rule and it's been very good to me. Super microcomputer has a relative strength of 62 which is good. It's a little bit pricey as its price to earnings is about 47 but it has a good earnings growth rate of 32%. Just because of its highly volatile nature, its tendency to go way up, then come down significantly, I consider it a trading stock. And it's weird to consider this good of a stock a trading stock. I'm left with putting anywhere from 600 shares to 300 shares at a time, depending on how it's moving and how it's acting. And then next, I have three good artificial intelligence stocks. The first of these is Broadcom. AVGO. It is a stock that connects everything with everything else. And as we look at the chart, you can see that it has a nice upward movement, much more predictable, much much more solid in some ways, let's say, than the super microcomputer, just because you won't have nightmares holding the stock. It has a good upward trend, and that's what you like to see. Broadcom's relative strength of 54, I would like to see that a little bit stronger than what it is. Its price to earnings is 27, which is good, and its earnings growth rate is 18%, which is decent. ASML is a Dutch company, which is the only company I know that's capable of transferring the dense and incredibly small artificial intelligence electronics onto the semiconductor chips through lithography. Looking at the one-year chart, you can see that ASML has been up and down until recently, where it similarly is experiencing a breakout, and its relative strength is 64, which is good. ASML is expensive, as its price to earnings is 42, and its earnings growth rate is 19%, which is good, but we would expect it to be a little bit more more, but I'm hanging on to it and expect future growth simply because it's the only company that does what it does for artificial intelligence. It is absolutely vital for artificial intelligence. I have a love-hate relationship with AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, and this is second place only to NVIDIA itself, so it will always be dragged upwards by NVIDIA, and so when I'm buying this stock, I'm always asking myself, why am I not buying more NVIDIA? But I already own so much NVIDIA. You know, how much more can I stand to own of NVIDIA? I own about $800,000 almost of NVIDIA. You know, I want to diversify a little bit in the artificial intelligence area, and this will be dragged upwards. And you can see it has a decent chart, although it's been consolidating recently, and it's been hanging out in the 170s, occasionally hitting 180. It's a good chart. AMD's relative strength is 57, which is okay. It's a little bit pricey at 47 PE, but its earnings growth rate is a solid and good 20%. I will always have some AMD just to kind of keep track of the whole artificial intelligence field. Vertiv Holdings, VRT, makes electrical equipment for data centers, notably cooling machines for the data centers. Looking at the chart, you can see it again has a nice one-year chart. It has some recent volatility, uh, which seems to be calming down. It seems to be staying in the low 60s pretty well. VRT's relative strength is 60, which is good. Its price to earnings is only 28, which is very good for how hot 
up this stock is, and its earnings growth rate is an excellent 35%. This is more the type of stock that I'd like to hold long term. And SIT, Insight Enterprises, is a company that's right next to me. It's officially in the retail computer sector. They've recently been doing a lot more cloud business, and they established a partnership with Microsoft, which I believe is going to help them a lot. And as you look at the one-year chart, it has this nice one-year chart, and it's going through sort of a consolidation, but I think it's going to break out pretty soon. I expect it to. Insight has okay relative strength at 51, but it is an undervalued company. It's worth over $250, and right now its price is in the 180s. Insight's price to earnings is 16, and its earnings growth rate is 16. So this is an undervalued company with a decent earnings growth rate, and I think it's a more long-term holding, although I expect it to break out any time with that partnership with Microsoft. My most recent addition is Cadence Design Systems, CDNS. They make the software which NVIDIA and Advanced Micro Devices uses to create their GPUs and CPUs. I see this as vital to artificial intelligence. I think it's recently reclaimed the 300. You can see the one-year chart has a nice upward slope. Cadence Design Systems relative strength is okay at 58. It is pricey. <laughs> its price to earnings is 51 and its earnings growth rate, it's decent at 19%, but we would wish that it was a little bit higher. But I'm willing to put up with that on the theory that it's going to only increase because it is so vital to artificial intelligence and is being used actively by NVIDIA and advanced micro devices to create its CPUs and GPUs. They use the software that CDNS provides. So I simply had to retire as a clinical psychologist because I couldn't afford to do it anymore, particularly at my age. Thank you for listening and watching. Be sure to tune back in. I plan to grab hot trends and go with them until they break. Follow the trend. The trend is your friend until the end when it starts to bend. That is my motto. That is what I'm going to follow. And hopefully uh, you can gain from this information and adapt it to your own investing style, which is different for everyone. Thank you.